what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Kitas. Kitas. While well, it's the end of week three of Cut Down to Kita Con. We made it. I think we should high five. Yep. So, so we'll find out how we did right, right after, after this. this. So if you're new to our channel, welcome. Like I said, my name is Joe. And I'm Rachel. And we're Two Crazy Ketos. And here on our channel, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the little bell icon icon in that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah well better late than never sorry that this video is a couple of days late the weekend sort of got away from us yeah so but we're getting it up now yes. so if you are new to our channel we're in the middle of a challenge uh, in a collaboration with watch autumn keto the coolest lady ever yeah so if you haven't seen her channel i'll leave a link right over rachel's head you gotta check it out she also has the coolest family ever yeah they are awesome to watch and she does different things like meal prep mondays and she like goes over what she eats on wednesdays and she does product reviews and things like that. So she's got a great channel, so make sure you check it out. Uh, but basically, we are heading off to KetoCom, which I cannot believe is a week away. I need to find our suitcases. <laughs> I don't even know where they are. So, and in preparation for, you know, heading to KetoCon, we've been doing this little cut down with Autumn, and we just finished up week three. I can't believe we made it this far. Yeah, so basically what we've been doing is every week we've been cutting 100 calories <laughs> off of our diet. We just finished up a week of... Rachel doing uh, 1,350 calories, and I did 1,900 calories. And heading into this coming week, your calories are down to 1,250 calories. That doesn't seem right. I think we need to, like, reevaluate this whole thing because I think, like, we've got the first two numbers mixed up, and it's really supposed to be 2,150 instead of 1,250. Yeah, that's not going to work. You don't think so? No. It was worth a shot. And my calories were at 1,800 and this week, or no, they, my calories were at 1,900 and this week they're at 1,800. I know what it was. We were supposed to swap. So I get your calories and you get my calories. That seems fair. High five. Yeah. Oh, he, you saw it. He high fived agreed to this. <laughs> Well, in addition to that, uh, we've limited ourselves to no more than 15 total carbs, but we've been trying to actually keep even lower than that. Mm -hmm. And Rachel committed to five miles of bike riding a day, and I've now joined her with my new bicycle. And that has been so much fun that we actually usually go way more than five miles. Yeah. What I've been doing is I've actually been biking until my little, I use the um, Under Armour like Map My Ride app, which oh. is really cool. It gives you a whole diagram on the map of where you've been. Okay. And I keep bike riding until that says, it come, gives me an audio thing in my earphones, like you've hit five miles, then I start heading home, which usually gives me at least another mile or two to get home. Yeah. Now I use my, um, my just my Apple Watch right. to, to track it. It's it's got its own like, little fitness thing on yeah, it. Yeah, well, but, there's a GPS in your Apple Watch. That's but why. the same thing. I wait until it hits five miles, and then I start heading home. Yeah. Whereas, so. honestly, when we first started out, I was like, I would be four miles and like a half in the front yard and just like biking back and forth until that fifth mile like completed. You didn't want to go over five miles. I didn't want to go over five miles. But now I love it. Yeah. In fact, we went on a really long bike ride like – way out the other day. That was a lot of fun. So we are enjoying the bike riding and we're going to continue that after the challenge. We're just finding it's a great thing for us to do together. But I think we should check in with Autumn. Yes, so, absolutely. So we sent Autumn some questions and we're going to check out her answers. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Hey, what's up, Autumn? So this week you went on a business trip. So that was kind of a unique situation. What was something new that you started doing on this business trip that you'd like to continue doing on future business That's trips? That's good. Well, honestly, the answer to that question is quite easy. And, and number one, it's exactly what you guys said last week. It's just playing. Um, I usually don't plan on my business trips. I try to have an overall goal, like do as well as I can, etc. But, you know, if you're being honest with yourself, like... You can do better, you know? You can actually plan exactly what you're gonna eat and you can still track and you can still hit your goals. And so 
I was so proud of myself, even though I'm doing this challenge and I'm killing it, I was so proud of myself that I actually stuck to my plan the whole weekend. Like, because I had it, you know? It was amazing. I'm just, I'm so proud and I'm definitely going to continue to do that for future business trips. I am so glad that your business trip went well without derailing your fitness plan. Yeah. Now before keto, even when I would be on like a standard American diet or any other kind of like diet where I was like watching calories or anything like that, usually my plan for my trips, whether it be business or vacation, was to go hog wild once I got to well, my Well, you were on vacation. Yeah, and so if I came home and wasn't 10 pounds up or more, from whatever trip we were on, I felt like that was like a major success, but really I was sad about it. And then my whole week after our trip was spent doing laundry as always. Now that never changes after keto. You still got to do all that laundry, but I also had to get back into the swing of things. So, so I think that's really awesome that she just, it was a continuation of her week. Right. And the thing is, is the planning, that helps even when you're not on a trip. I find that if we plan, like even our meals for the rest of the day, or if I sit down at night and plan tomorrow's meal or plan the week's meals, we don't get off track. Way more It's when I start going like, hey, what are you going to eat today? I don't know. I'll figure it out like five minutes before a meal. And yeah. that's where you start like raiding the refrigerator of this let's is what's available. Shopping. Or yeah, let's go grocery shopping. Or you know what? Let's just get fast food because there's nothing ready. Yeah. Works so much better when you plan both on a trip and when you're at home. And honestly, it saves you money too. Yeah. So you've committed to exercising every single day. How did you incorporate your exercise while you're on your business trip? Walking. Our hotel room was on the ninth floor and we were there for a conference. So there was a ton of people there. So instead of standing next to those crowded elevator banks, we would just walk up and down the stairs every time that we had to go to the room. So, and I say we, I'm talking about my sister and I. Um, and so we got in 12,000 steps a day simply due to choosing to walk everywhere, taking the stairs where there's an elevator or an escalator, uh, you know, walking to get our meals, walking around the mall on our break time, always just incorporating movement and activity and that was awesome. It was really good to to choose fitness and to choose activity over convenience, even when you're outside of your normal environment. Walking can really give you a good sense of accomplishment, can it? Absolutely. I mean, anytime you have those places where you never used to walk and you start to walk and you feel like, oh my gosh, I just did it. Like every store parking lot we ever used to go to. Yeah, because I used to have a handicap sticker because of my ankle, I had such severe arthritis and I would have days where I couldn't walk. I had a handicap sticker. Mm -hmm. And then after I got started on keto and all the inflammation went down and I lost the weight, I didn't need to renew the handicap sticker anymore. So I awesome. went from always parking in the closest place and now to just get some extra exercise in. How I usually we park? park way in the back of the parking lot and you feel accomplished. Like, wow, I used to have to be within one spot of the door really and now I've walked it. all these extra spots and it makes you feel good about yourself. Like taking, you know, the stairs instead of the escalator or the elevator. And don't kid yourself. That's a serious workout. And that's a great idea to like do that instead of trying to find a local gym when you go on trips or something like that, because now you feel like, oh, I'm just ruining my vacation by going to the gym, yeah. just doing that walking, that was a great idea to keep your fitness up. That is an excellent idea. And yeah, and you don't have to make your decisions as to like what hotel you're going to even stay yep. in or make special arrangements because wherever you are, you could walk. Yeah. Even if you just walk around your hotel room, I mean, or not your hotel room, but your hotel campus. Yeah. What unique challenges did your business trip present for your eating window and how did you overcome those challenges? So I think here is a good lesson to learn. Uh, and to be completely honest, I did not stick to my eating window for this business trip. Um, I was just simply in sessions too long all day. And so I had to make the appropriate food choices for when I could. I had to schedule them around the conference. And so we started very early and we ended very late. So normally where I like to eat between 11 and five, I was eating at 8 a.m. And some days I was eating at 7.30 and 8 p.m. So I still tried to make sure that I cut my eating window off at a decent time, as in, I don't like to snack. I don't wanna wake up in the morning, first thing I'm doing is snacking. I don't wanna to get to late at night, and the last thing I'm doing is snacking. I made sure to deliberately start and end eating 
but I did increase that window simply because I had to be flexible because of my schedule. Well, that's a great attitude to have because that's you know what the bottom line is, we can plan all we want, but sometimes we just have to adapt to the situation. So just having that idea of like, hey, I have an eating window, I'm just gonna change it up a little bit, but stick to it as close as possible and being able to adapt to what happened, that's the best way to be successful. Yeah. Okay, Autumn, five total carbs and what is it, 1,300 calories this oh week? Goodness. What are you cutting out of your diet this week? Ugh, what am I not removing from my diet this week? You guys, it is the last week of the challenge, 1,300 calories. What is food? I don't know. So to be honest, I haven't figured it out exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be one of those incremental items that I have. Maybe instead of four tablespoons of heavy whipping cream for my whipped cream dessert, it's gonna be three tablespoons. Who am I kidding? It's gonna be four tablespoons. So I'll find somewhere to, to incrementally reduce something, but that's why I love making those small changes is because, you know, you can just start to tinker with things here and there without it seeming like it has an overall impact on your diet. The largest impact has been taking away those carbs. It hasn't been the calories at all. It's been the carbs. Cutting out those vegetables in weeks one and two were just like, ah! But the fact that I've already done that last week, so no vegetables last week, I'm not really feeling so deprived going into the week ahead. Well, I totally agree with you. The hardest thing for me was watching the vegetables go because that was adding a lot of bulk to my plate. So um, vegetable weeks, as they reduced, those were hard weeks on our marriage. Those were hard weeks on me because you wanted to kill me. But once we got past the murder, <laughs> then, uh, and I got used to this, the small looking plates, it was easier to lose calories versus carbs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that what Autumn is doing is so awesome because when she's just eating the similar things every single day and every single week where you're having like, you know, ground beef and bacon, eggs, sausage, and just just cutting a little bit of that out. And that's something that's helping us right now where we're pretty much eating ground beef mm -hmm. and we're eating eggs. So now instead of eating like a pound of ground beef for myself, I'm only eating three quarters of a pound. Instead of eating four eggs, I'm eating three eggs. And for you, instead of eating three eggs, you just drop it down to two and it's not so bad because you right. cut out one egg. Well, that's 70 calories right there. That's yeah. cutting out most of what you're trying to cut out to begin with. Yeah, so because this has been like a gradual decrease and right. I think this is healthy it, for anyone who is well this is the proper keto, way to do it is is to just gradually reduce then yeah you don't feel deprived because you don't have a couple extra forkfuls of, of what you're eating. It's just right. not as noticeable. Right. You guys, speaking of the week ahead, we are moving into the final week of this challenge and I'm so happy and I'm so proud of myself and I'm so proud of you guys. And I just want to say, keep up the good work. You can do it. Let's kill this for this last week. And it's almost time for KetoCon. Well, you are doing incredible and we are yes. so excited about your progress and also about KetoCon. Yep. One week. Coming this way. Yep. So it. we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. So Autumn is doing incredible in this challenge. She's kicking butt. Yes. She's taking names. Yes. I think she's going to have some incredible measurements once this is over. I think she's going to be shocked to see like how well she's done in this challenge because she's just nailing it. She just, she's, she's really nailing it. Like seriously. Yeah. So let's talk about what we're going to do for the final week of Cut Down to Con. Yeah, because Autumn is killing it, but will we be killing it? We're going to kill it this week. We're going to do oh, awesome this week. I like this attitude. Now you may want to kill me by the end of the week as well. <laughs> based on like your plate size but well how bad are we talking okay so this week i'm down to 1800 total calories oh poor baby look it's the tiniest violin playing a tune for you oh let me get it, it oh, oh can you see it <laughs> <laughs> and you're down to 1250 calories okay so those are legit tears i'm sorry bring in the orchestra <laughs> in addition to that we're still at 15 total carbs Okay, Which feels has, like we've been doing less than that. We are trying to do less. We're trying to do like 10 or 11. The only time we've been exceeding is when we keep getting all of these snacks that we have to review for like this channel. They're like little packages from God because right when I'm like, I can't do this. There's nothing sweet to eat ever. Then we get like a little cookie review or something. And even though we can only eat a half of a half of a half of a half of a half. The things we do for this channel. No, thank you. Thank you for this channel. <laughs>
Thank you. By the way, if you hear all that rumbling, welcome to South Florida, where one minute it is like bright, sunny, 95 degrees out. And right now, I literally cannot see my car, which is like 25 feet in front of us on the other side I of the think, window. Is that Noah? I know. It's absolutely downpouring, thundering. Welcome to South Florida summers. Eh, if you don't like it, wait 20 minutes. It'll change. So... So, okay, so that's what we're doing. In addition, we're continuing with your bike riding, and now I've joined your bike riding. Yeah. And so... We bike very differently, as we've discussed. We do. I kind of, like, lap her constantly. I'm just looking at stuff. We're going to have to speed up those gears to make it a little bit tougher. Maybe you'll go faster. You really want to die. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we're doing for food. We're gonna keep it super simple this week. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much doing beef and eggs, some butter, because my biggest challenge that I'm having is I keep hitting my protein. I have no more carbs left, but I have like 400 calories and I don't wanna go low because I don't wanna screw up my metabolism. So uh -huh. I've gotta hit that at least 1700 calories. I'm being left with a ton of fat. So what I'm gonna do is for the next few days, I'm gonna do beef. I'm gonna do some eggs, I'm doing butter, kind of bringing it up for myself. And then the last five days, I'm going to do pretty much like a keto brick and then a couple of eggs and some butter mm -hmm. or a keto brick and a little bit of beef. Like I even did that yesterday. I did a half a keto brick. I did like a half a pound of ground beef and two eggs. There you go. So just totally simple. You're just using your fuel to get you where you want to be. And yours is pretty much like the same place, right? It's about five eggs in a day, half a pound of ground beef, a little bit of butter or duck fat, and you're done. That's all she wrote. So the one thing I am going to try to change, I think for both of us, I haven't even talked to you about this, okay. is I'm going to, we're trying to tighten up our eating window because we can, we keep eating super late. We yeah. keep eating eight, nine, 10 o'clock. Just the day gets away from us. Yeah, so we're trying to eat early, be done eating by like six or seven o'clock. And mm -hmm. just like, if we haven't gotten it in, we haven't gotten it in at that point. See if that makes a change. Don't worry. It, if I know that's my eating windows closing, like I, I'm like an Indiana Jones movie. Like I'm getting through, I'm yeah. getting that food through that little crack in the floor. And the other thing that I'm gonna start incorporating for myself, even though it wasn't part of the challenge, I want to start for at least a few weeks not intermittent fasting to one meal a day because okay. I'm finding sometimes my blood glucose is higher than it used to be in the morning and the more research I've done, I've done it says I found that if you've been doing keto for a long time and you're doing a lot of OMAD, mm -hmm. you tend to have a little bit higher blood sugar in the morning because well, you haven't given yourself a ton of fat and like your body is creating the glucose when you first wake up. And you don't want that. So like I would, I'll wake up with like a 95 blood glucose and then a couple of hours later it's dropping down. So I wanna see if eating more than one meal a day and kind of spacing it out and mm -hmm. getting more of those fats in affects my blood glucose at all. Because Let's I'm not eating it. carbs, Yeah, I'm not going off a plan, No, but I think I need to get more fat throughout the day instead of just a ton of fat at night. Probably a good idea. Let's try it, let's so see. We're gonna see what that does and we'll let you guys know. Mm -hmm. So, well that's the end of week three wrap up. We're in going into week four, so Believe it or not, we're going to continue this on for seven days and we're going to try to wrap it up over the weekend and then continue it for four days, even though we're not going to film a final episode. Just ready that, for right? travel. Right? And then we'll let you guys know what the final, final tally was, like when we're maybe at the airport yeah. heading off to KetoCon. Hey, that's a good idea. I like so, that. So that's our video for today. If you like what you saw, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.